Hi folks, I just wanted to throw together another video just to cover some more of the aspects of Aikido. Uh, same rules apply as all my other ones. Uh, I'm happy to open up a, an honest and genuine dialogue and discussion about some of the aspects of Aikido and the martial arts. But if you're just here to throw down bad comments and just strip everything apart without listening to exactly what I'm saying, jog on, not interested, forget about it. But uh, on the other side of that, keeping it positive, because that's what this one's basically about, I want to touch on what is possibly the most misaligned and misunderstood part of Aikido. Now, Aikido is comprised of three characters, I, Ki and Do. I, we can easily take as meaning harmony or blending or things coming together in a, a way that's uh, suitable for them to harmonise and utilise each other. Do, we often pick it up the wrong way, but let's just call it as the way, the path, the, the voyage or the discovery type of element. There's much more to it than that, though, in an oriental sense and in particular in a Japanese sense. Uh, but Aikido also suffers in the today because it has the word ki inserted into it. And ki is what I want to cover in this particular video. Now, when we look at what we mean by that, it's... We immediately see people either go on the defensive or make the wrong assumptions about what key actually is. And unfortunately, the internet is littered with idiots, halfwits, and to be honest, sycophants and just people who want to be adored, claiming to be key masters, undertaking techniques that are throwing people with the power of their mind and the power of key. And this is because in the West, we have bastardised this concept of key into something that's, that we've done what we usually do in the West when we come across a very difficult or complex uh, Eastern concept. And key is one of the most complex Eastern concepts that you're possibly likely to come across in any martial arts uh, training or endeavour. And as a result of this, what happens is it's easy for people to deride it, deny its existence, deny it works, deny its its status, the status of what this concept of key is. Because what you see is rubbish. You see people moving their arms and guys flying across the room or tapping people on the shoulder and they start acting like a jellyfish. I've seen videos of this and bouncing all over the room. That is the biggest load of BS on the planet. Forget about all that. That is literally a cult with a crazy guy leading crazier people who are happy to suck up to the crazy guy because it makes them feel special about themselves. Let's just cut through all the nonsense here and get straight to it. That's what that is. The concept of key, particularly within Aikido, is looking at it from the overreaching full ideal and concept of what that word means. So to help us get through this particular video without everyone putting me into the crazy bracket, let's just express to you right now what key is. Key, you'll hear often uh, put across as, oh, it's spirit. It means spirit, or it means energy. Energy is my favourite. They never say it with small eyes. Energy. Lots of energy in the room. Mm, I'm projecting my key out my hands. Can you all feel this? Mm, it's lovely, isn't it? Feel that energy. Oh, it's massive. That's like saying a car is metal. How do you drive a car? Well, it's metal. You know, literally, that's how much sense that makes. A car is composed of metal, the parts are built from metal, but they integrate with each other in a way that's completely beyond my comprehension, because I know nothing about cars, I can drive them and that's it. Okay, so just put it into that context for a second, okay, and don't switch off. Right, you're still here, that's good. Okay, so while you're still listening to me, I want you to try and adopt the concept of key from this Western perspective, okay? But in order to do that, I want you to understand how they deal with key in the Far East and Japan and with chi in the Chinese language, all, all that kind of thing. It's more than just a concept of energy. Sorry, energy. It's more than just a concept of energy and it's more than just a concept of spirit. It is those, but it's so much more. Okay? So you just have to look at how the... To say how are you in Japanese is genki desu ka which literally translates as how is your, your good key, your, your well-being? How is your key? And they're not just talking about your health. They're talking about every aspect of your life. 
So in order to get that type of concept into the West where we can understand this, and particularly in a martial arts perspective where we can understand this, here's what I want you to think about. Key is your body and mind and their ability to come together. That's the fundamental concept of it. Key is everything. You have your personal key and you have the key of the world. Let's call it universal key. Tohei did that. Koichi Tohei. In his book, Key in Daily Life, he refers to it as universal key and personal key, which is a really good uh, way of looking at things. So the universal key is all that stuff that affects you on a daily basis. Your personal key is all the stuff you're carrying with you. Key is your thought, your intent, your focus, your habits, your health, what you eat, we're getting into universal key now, how you conduct yourself, how you choose to be influenced by others, the message you put out there into the world. This is all concepts of key. It's about how you use your body, how you misuse your body. It's about biomechanics. It's about physics. It's about the chemical processes that happen inside of us. It's about the spark of intellect. It's about the personal beliefs of, a, of an individual. It's about how they view themselves in relation to the world round about them. This is what key is. It's all of this. So when we're talking about key in martial arts, what we're talking about is the unification of mind and body in the techniques that you're actually attempting to do. Now, there are exercises called, funnily enough, key exercises that help you integrate your mind and body during movement. And what we're talking about there is, in a kind of modern sports parlance, what we're talking about there is body-mind coordination and biomechanical coordination within the body. So you'll see techniques being done that talk about combining your key as, with your breath as you breathe, and allowing your muscles to move in certain ways. Now, that's not rubbish. That actually works. If you try swimming holding your breath, it doesn't work. It does, just not for long and not very effectively. And I wouldn't recommend it. If you try any exercise holding your breath, then it's eventually going to fail. The body will start to become anaerobic, it'll start to become deprived of oxygen, and it falls apart. The taking in of oxygen is the same in, J in the Japanese concept as taking in the universal key round about you. Now, what does that mean? Well, what that means is, if you go for a run in the country, and you go for a run through a chemical plant, you're going to find two very different levels of oxygen content being taken up, not to mention all the other rubbish that's in the air. So that external environment will affect your capability to breathe properly, and depending on what you're breathing in, keep breathing properly. Okay, That's two very simple concepts of how your key is affected by the world round about you. So the better the air you take in, and the stronger you can give that back out, then the more your body can continue to be coordinated correctly. And therefore, the better your techniques become. And that's what a lot of these internal exercises, people who practice Qigong, for example, they're practicing movements that open up the energy flow throughout the body. Now, I'm, using, I'm not using the word energy. I'm using the word the energy flow around the body, allowing the body to function in a correct manner with good posture, proper movement, and proper focus. Okay? So when you're working with key. What you're doing is, you're trying to find a way to function that best suits the techniques and the movements that you're trying to do. Now, we've all done this. And your personal key, as we look at it from an Aikido perspective, is affected by numerous factors. It's affected by your state of mind. It's affected by what you eat. It's affected by how you act. It's affected by the world around you. Now, if we can take this back into a basic concept, there's days I can go into the gym, I can load up 120 kilo, and I can get out four or five good reps. And I feel like Superman. I'm walking out there, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling great. And then there's days I go in and I can barely push 80. It's the same me, same concept, same things, stuff like this. 
And it's completely different because my personal focus, my personal thoughts, my personal life, my stress levels, my personal health, my uh, food intake has maybe changed. Maybe I'm dieting and I'm trying to shed the weight instead of bulking up like I was a couple of years ago to try and get a bit stronger. You know, all of this is, is things that can affect how you perform in any given day. Just ask any professional athlete about it. Ask any amateur athlete about it. Okay? You look at a boxer or a fighter that's not on their game. You don't know why they're not on their game. So what happens? Folk go into social media and start lambasting them. They're past it. They're rubbish. They weren't the in it. You, you know, they gave it half a shot. What's that do with you? That individual is the one that needs to worry about what was going on with them on that particular day. You know, they don't want or need any of your negativity. And why are you putting that negativity out there? That's a use of negative thought, negative key. You're not helping yourself by going down that route. You're not helping anyone else be going down that route. So why do you do it? And that's where the concept of key starts moving in away from the physical into the more uh, individual, personal, and if you want to go that direction, spiritual aspect of things. Okay, because the concept of key ties strongly into some of the kind of Buddhist philosophies as well. Now, I've exp now that's not religion. That's spirituality I'm talking about. Buddhism's a religion. I'm talking about the more spiritual aspect of it, where you take the lessons you learn from that. So let's look at how we use key in any given day, okay? You are the one in charge and control of your life as best you can be. You may be a victim of circumstance, but you can choose not to be the victim of the outfall of that circumstance and work positively with it. That's you taking a negative key concept and bring it into a positive light, trying to make it work for you instead of against you. So not sitting back in your heels, crying into your beer. Actually looking at it and thinking, right, this is terrible, but how can, how can I turn this round? That's positive key. That's positive thought. Positive action. Positive mindset. This is what key is about. Now, in Aikido, this has been, as I said earlier, bastardised and twisted by some people into being, in fact, it's not just Aikido. Because what you'll generally find is a lot of these key masters, they're, they're just total piss artists, they're bullshit artists. They're not doing anything that's technically a martial art. They are individuals who are taking a concept that is very important and intrinsic to so many martial arts and effectively just making a mockery of it for their own purposes, for their own goals, for their own needs, and probably making a lot of money out of it, you know? I'm still in a, a, a kind of 10 grand deficit for Aikido. I don't think I've ever made money out of Aikido. I've got a job for making money. Do you know what I mean? I do Aikido because I enjoy it. I don't do it to make money. So the, the concept of what we're looking at here is that even what I'm doing here, I'm allowing my personal key to be influenced by this thing that we see online. And that's not a positive thing either. So maybe I need to work in that and let that go. You know, let them be them. Don't dismiss, don't slag them off, don't diss them, just let them be themselves because eventually that energy that they're putting into that, that focus, that determination, and I mean energy as in literally the physical effort they're putting in to be known and do all this stuff, it's going to come back and bite them. But I'm not going out there to try and disprove them. That's not my job. In fact, it's, it's not even something I'd want to do. I'd rather focus on me, on my students and the stuff that we're doing and keeping it as positive. But what I do want to do is to try and expand the concept of what we're looking at here. So when people come to me wanting to learn Aikido and they start asking about what key is, you know, I don't want to fall back in that simple, oh, it's just an energy, energy. It's just a spirit thing. You, you know, it's the way of harmony of energy. I tell them that key is a very complex concept. But what I tell them to think about it is, think about key as how you interact with your world. So that's what Aikido means to me. It's the way of harmonising you with your world. It's not about harmonising you with this hidden mystical energy. And that's literally, this is the tip of the iceberg of this subject. I could go on for days talking about this. I've been engaged in conversations with people for hours on end talking about key. I've studied Japanese philosophy. I've studied... Uh, traditional Chinese medicine, I've studied uh, shiatsu 
and I still practice that from a personal basis. You know, and all of this deals with the manipulation of key throughout the body, and that's a completely different subject matter. You know, how to change your focus, how to turn hurt into care, all that kind of thing. It's, it, you know, and it, but basically what it's all coming back to is, and I'm going to bring that word up again, key is all about self-care and the care and protection of others. That's positive key. If you go down a bad route and you all you'd want to do is talk yourself down, that's negative key. And if your body's out of balance, if you get too much negative key, your health suffers, your mind suffers, everything like that. So when it comes to what you see out there as key, particularly within the concept of Aikido, understand that when people in Aikido, genuine Aikido, not the nonsense stuff, right? When we're talking about key, we're talking about a vast subject, not this stupid. 10th Dan Key Master, 12th Dan Key Master nonsense that, that a lot of people are putting out there. We're talking about on a very realistic basis, the integration of your mind and body with your environment. Okay? And that also includes when you're doing your techniques. And some of the techniques you see in Aikido look absolutely ridiculous. You know, and you see people saying, that's never going to work in the street. Well, of course it isn't. It's never going to work in the street. That's not the point of this exercise. The point of this exercise is teaching you to hold your balance while somebody tries to push you backwards. You shouldn't then be twitching your nose like, what do you call it, Samantha and Bewitched and they're flying six feet across the room. What you should be doing is standing your ground and finding your centre of balance, finding your centre of gravity, adjusting, using your key, get inside your body, feel where all the minor muscular adjustments need to be made, keep your breath going, keep your focus going, keep your concentration going, okay? And then... Being able to resist more what's been applied to your body. That's what key is. It's not this daft concept that is getting banded about more and more. But we have to ask ourselves, why this is happening? Why are these types of concepts being adopted by people? And it's simply because the world itself is becoming more desperate. People are longing for something that they can feel part of that they don't have to sacrifice anything for, they don't have to commit anything to. And as a result of that, it becomes much easier for people to be manipulated by these other groups and factions that want to just take a concept as complex as key and reduce it down to, I put my hand on you, I push my key into you and you're going to be left reeling and jumping about the room. You know, my thought will stop your punch. And I've said this before, my thought will stop your punch, but ask it's going to get my hand in the way. It's not, and it's going to move my head slightly to the side. It's not because it's, I'm literally, physically, you know, stopping your punch with my mind. That's the wrong attitude. That's the wrong thing. And it would be great if we could see that stop. Uh, however, if you see someone doing these exercises and they're doing it in a positive way, for example, they're asking someone to stay focused on the palm and they're turning the palm into their face and they're telling them to keep focused, but while focused on a target object, manipulate and bring their body down into a proper landing and fall then that's teaching people to learn to roll with movement and that's a completely different concept that's not the person doing the technique throwing them that's the individual keeping a specific distance to learn timing blending it's called ma'ai in japanese and it means timing distance and blending all in that one thing it's about teaching someone to keep up with what's happening so that they can stay ahead of the movement, stay ahead of the breakfall, stay ahead of the technique and keep themselves safe. It's a completely different concept, you know, but it's important we see the difference. It, people need to wake up and start seeing the differences rather than just looking at it and going, oh, that must be what they're talking about. Aikido, that's all that rubbish where you see the folk jumping about and people tapping you and you go flying. That's not Aikido. Key in Aikido is a very intrinsic and concept and it's central to the art itself if you want to understand key more do a bit of research into the proper ways that this is investigated looked at and look at how you can look at it from a western perspective not just from the eastern perspective okay the concept of key is not rubbish the concept of key is not stupid the concept of key is not something that we can just dismiss and say it doesn't exist the true concept of what the what is meant when people say key and they're talking about it from an Eastern perspective is very valid. It's how we as Westerners choose to perceive it. That's what's wrong and that's where the fault lies. 
and then what we then choose to do with that knowledge. Do we propagate it on our own concept of it and what we see and take it down that route, therefore it's all tarred the same way? Or do we choose to stop and investigate it, look at it and think, no, this can't be right. That doesn't make sense what I'm seeing. There must be more to it than this. And then as a result of that, go and find out what it actually means. So that's where I want to go with this one. The concept of key, how we use it in Aikido and how it's actually a physical coordination of thought, focus and intent along with everything else that we're doing in martial arts. You all use this. Anyone who's a martial artist who watches this uses this concept every single time. And it comes right down even to muscle memory, how you train the body up to do proper muscle memory movement through repetition. We all do it. I don't care if you do MMA, boxing, judo, Krav Maga, Jiu Jitsu, BJJ, Taekwondo, Karate, Aikido, Aikido Jiu Jitsu. I don't care. You're all doing it. You might not call it it, but you're doing it. And that's the difference is we need to stop seeing this as a conflict and start looking at it for what it is. We all share the same concepts when we're dealing with Eastern martial arts. We all share the same basic fundamental knowledge and the basic fundamental focus. But just because as a Western audience, we think we have something sussed out that we don't, we cannot afford to dismiss it. Because the more you look into it, you start to pick up little things that start to make more sense, not just about your body and about your movements, but about your techniques and how you can become a better martial artist and a better human being as a result. So that's it. That's all I'm going to say on the subject. I'd love to get your feedback as usual. Let me know what you think. And if anyone wants to open up a dialogue or discussion, happy to take that on board. Keep it positive. Uh, other than that, uh, stay safe in the world. Again, I say this every week, it's still COVID out there. So respect the rules as best you can. Keep everyone safe and look after yourselves. Cheers all.